Hey guys, Landon McCarter with Secure Asia Marketing. I'm bringing you five insurance marketing tips working right now. Okay, so how do I know insurance marketing tips that you, I know you want to know? Well, all we do is insurance marketing. So I'm Landon McCarter, I'm the president and founder, co-founder of Secure Agent Marketing. Uh, all we do is insurance marketing, lead development, um, everything. We're one of the you know largest in the country that specialize only in insurance. So what I want to do is break down five important tips. The reason I picked these five is because no matter how large or small, how new or old, most people that I talk to are missing one of these five tips typically. Um, you, know, you would be surprised how even large companies don't have some of these things in order. So the first thing that I want to go through is make sure that you pay attention and build your brand. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, people work with brands and people like you have got to make sure that your identity is passed through your materials, your, you know, if you have a presentation folder, your business card, your website, your social media profiles, you have to have that brand developed. There really needs to be a strong brand presence. You need to think through that. What do you want people to feel whenever they, you know, go to your website? What do you want them to think when they go to your website? Do you want to present yourself as buttoned up professional, you know, executive or do you want to be casual, um, you know, fun? and you know friendly or do you want to be educational or you got to think through that and all those things come through in your brand right so there's nothing more important when it comes to brand development than your logo okay logos are not that hard to create you can have your friend do it you can do it on your with with yourself on photoshop there's plenty of free tools that you can use to throw up a logo you can even go to fiverr and have somebody throw up a logo for 5 10 15 20 bucks the main thing that you want to do is make sure that you define that logo and then you put that logo on your business card, your shirt, your website, everything. It needs to be consistent. I can't tell you how many insurance professionals I see with 14 different logos uh, between every interaction that I have with them. They got their logo and their email signature is different than the one that's on their website that's different than the one on their t-shirt. Okay, don't be sloppy. Your brand it really presents who uh, you are. And in the insurance business, it's all about being um, a professional and driving confidence in that other individual that you're talking to to potentially work with. And having inconsistencies on a subconscious level, it does mess with your buying process. It's, it's like having a, a messy storefront if you were to walk into a storefront. Another thing that is super important when you're talking about building your brand is developing what's called like a brand board. Now, a lot of you um, maybe haven't heard of a brand board or know what that is. What a brand board is, is in the marketing industry, um, creating a brand board is basically one uh, document that is essentially everything that has to do with your brand. So if you have a uh, web developer or a person doing a postcard for you or a person doing a letterhead for you or a person doing um, some type of customer appreciation postcard or email or website or whatever, you have one place that all of your brand uh, key components are uh, in so that that designer or marketing professional can then make sure that they're not using you know, different logos or different uh, fonts or different colors. You know, being off just a little bit you know, is, is actually a, a mistake. So what a brand board is, is it has uh, your logo and your different variations of your logo. What's your logo look like on a white background? What's it look like on a back background? What does it look like? Uh, transparent so you can put it on a t-shirt you got to think through all those things <coughs> the next thing that a brand board has is your font what is the actual font of your website of your letterhead of everything a, a designer needs to know those things also what's the color scheme what are the actual colors that I was to go look and represent on you know if I was to put one color the same color on your postcard that you're just mailing versus your website versus your t-shirts or whatever that is, what's the actual color number that that individual needs to know to look it up whenever they're doing their designing, right? You also need to have textures and images. I'm gonna show you an example of our brand board. We're going through sort of a rebranding process at Secure Agent Marketing. I'll show you our branding board right now. If you look at, we have all those elements. Right? So, uh, step number two is you want to make sure that you want to implement that brand into your website. Well, if you've created an excellent brand board, then it's really easy to, uh, you know, if that brand board, as a designer, it's really easy to look at that brand board and then build a website that matches that brand board very easily because it's got your logo, it's got your color scheme, it's got your shape, it's got your images. It's really easy for a, a marketing professional to actually build your website. That also is cheaper for you. It shaves off hours of revisions that you're going to go through because, well, I don't necessarily like that, but I didn't really know why I don't like that. I just don't like it. Well, all that's solved if you have a brand consistency 
uh, set. And if your web developer comes back with a idea that's completely different than your brand, you can be like, no, 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 look, look at my brand board. Like, what are you talking about? Why would I like purple? My color scheme is not purple. See, see, here's my brand, right? That's super important. So your website is what I would say, like your digital, you know, uh, handshake. So what happens in the insurance, a lot of insurance is done over the phone. A lot of insurance is done, you know, you're letting people in your home, you're talking, you're giving your credit card number, you're giving your you know, bank account information sometimes over the phone to people that are coming to your home. It is super, super important that your website is put together, crisp, clean, you know, communicates who you are, et cetera, right? It's really um, very, very important in moving into 2020 because we, you know, the industry is moving towards a digital uh, path where, you know, we're not as likely, like let me put it this way, the trend in insurance marketing is being done more and more over the phone. So therefore, I'm not having the opportunity to show up in my nice car with my nice suit or whatever. You need to have a nice website that explains who you are, that people can trust you, right? So now, whenever you are talking about your actual website, make sure that you have your main um, pages built out and you're really you know, communicating extremely clearly on what you do and who your target audience is, et cetera. Okay, so what I mean by that is you wanna make sure that all of your pages across your top of your website are broken out. So like for an example, you wanna have an about us you know, section, and you wanna have a page for each of your main services that you offer. So if you offer, for instance, final expense insurance, Medicare and Medicare supplement, you want three different particular um, you know, pages on your website that talks about those particular verticals and educates to that particular audience because the person that's interested in MedSup is not the same person that's interested in final expense. And the person that's interested in final expense is not the same person that's interested in term life. So you wanna make sure that you don't just have one page on your website that talks all about insurance services we offer and then has bullet points or whatever. Each major service that you have, you wanna have, have its own page, all right? You also wanna have a testimonials page. And then most importantly, you wanna have a blog feed, right? That blog feed is we're gonna circle back more to later. But that blog feed is super important because that's how you create content, you educate your customers. You actually get a lot of organic website traffic by blogging. Um, we're gonna get into that here in a little bit. Step number three, okay, is gonna be set up your social media profiles consistent with your brand board and your website. They, all the main social media profiles, you know, in LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, they all have an opportunity to design your logo. There's a header image. You can make that design look exactly like your website. You want your website to match your brand and your social media profiles to match your, web, your website. Your social media profiles are seen as the personality of your digital presence. Your website is like the uh, information. The social media is your personality, okay? Whenever you're doing insurance uh, business in the insurance industry, we are people, it's relationships, it's referrals, okay? If I, um, believe it or not, like your social media presence actually matters in, in insurance. Uh, you, if, you, you're in the, if you're in the insurance industry, you, you know that. There's a lot of influencers. In fact, you know, Cody Askins, my business partner, built his entire you know, empire on social media, um, digital marketing, et cetera. It's, it's because he took that very serious. When you look at his YouTube header, looks exactly like his Facebook header, looks exactly like his website, and it's all brand consistent. That's not an accident, okay? So, you know, you wanna make sure also you're leveraging those uh, social platforms. There's tools that can allow you to schedule posts out. It is important if you're a producer to have, you know, three to four to five potential website posts uh, per week. Um, we're gonna get into how to actually do that here in a little bit, but it's easy if you just schedule it. So if you create some content, just think for 10 minutes on what's coming up this week, what's a holiday, whatever it is, and then schedule out those posts so that you can then, um, you know, not have to do it every day, it's just handle it on Monday morning, and you got all your posts scheduled. Po you know, schedule them for the month for all that matters, right? So that's a tool that you can actually leverage to not make it seem overbearing to manage a social media profile. You can schedule those. Point number four for insurance marketing tips working right now is you're gonna need to create some lead development activities, okay? Now what do I mean by lead development activities? Well, in the insurance business, you have to actually uh, get people to talk to to be able to make money. Your lead development is a direct correlation to how much money that you make, okay? Well, digital marketing and social media is extremely powerful to generate leads. You can do it through paid methods on social media. You can do it through organic methods on social media and uh, content 
I'm gonna touch on both. The first thing you can do is build out, you know, marketing campaigns with social media. Um, we obviously do this for a lot of our customers. So just as an example, if you're selling, you know, statewide uh, Medicare or statewide, you know, final expense, we could be generating leads for five, six, seven, eight, nine bucks a piece um, per lead of people that are talking to. Um, you can even get down to as small as a zip code to drive those campaigns. Now, if, if this is all intimidating to you, then you can work with a professional to make sure you're not blowing through budget because one thing that will happen is if you're not super comfortable is you will waste a lot of money if you don't know what you're doing to try and learn. So um, we would love to help you with that. Another thing you can do is organic activity that can generate leads. So that'd be making social posts, you know, that would be creating content on your blog. We're gonna get into that next. And just overall creating content, educating users, creating videos, doing blogs, just creating sort of content that is built to educate and is built to get the individual to engage uh, with your content and educate. Tip number five is produce consistent content. Now, a good content strategy is really not that hard. You just have to think about it. Okay, so here's a content strategy that I would recommend. This is gonna help you with your organic lead generating activities. It's gonna help you with your referrals. It's gonna help you with just becoming an expert in the industry um, as well. So all you have to do is come up with four blog topics per month, okay? That's not that many, release one a week. It needs to be about 400 to 600 words, all right? Once you create that blog topic, go and write the actual blog posts, you know, four to 600 words, and then create a vlog, whether it's on your cell phone or a camera or whatever, and create a YouTube video that's talking about the same topic and embed that YouTube video in your blog, okay? Then take that blog content and vlog content, chop it into five smaller pieces, maybe it's just points or highlights of the actual content, whatever it is, and then post those five smaller pieces on your social media platforms throughout the week, right? Then email the actual blog content to your actual user database as well, driving them to more content to read from your site. So that way you're covering your social, your blogging, your email marketing, and everything that has to do with content marketing. It's not that hard to come up with four blog contents per month and write you know, 1,800 words or whatever, produce some videos. All you have to do that is once a month. You can knock that out in one day. And you'd be surprised how many organic referrals you get organic website traffic you get if it's all structured the right way. Um, and uh, I would just highly, highly recommend creating a content strategy because people work with the people that educate them. Now, what I want you to do is make sure that you understand that if you have any problems with implementing any of this, we would love to help you. So Create Your Marketing is built to help any of the five, but I will also tell you, you also don't have to pay a professional for any of those five as well. Those are all things that you can do for free. So if you're on a budget, do it yourself and get a professional later. If you have, want to invest in your business and you feel weak on one of those five, then reach out to us and I'd love to do a consultation with you on talking about that actual particular project that you're talking about and help you create your brand board or help you create your website or help you create your lead generating activity or help you create your blog content or video content, whatever. We do all of that as a part of our services. So if you guys found value of these five insurance marketing tips working right now, and we will talk to you on the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, which I know you did, go check out two of other videos. One's demystifying search engine optimization and the other one is managing online reviews. I hope to see you guys over there.